Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on Boulder Canyon. I am just going to run the combine up over this way because he's filled up, he put the spout out and then he was waiting. So I'm going to go and unload it into the trailer and then we're going to just put it back into the crop over on that side rather than worrying about taking it all the way over. And I'm going to let it then carry on, just inching its way around the fields, doing what it does. And while we do that, while it does that, we're going to run back over the rake over there. And we're going to finish just doing a little bit of raking around the edge of the field that we started off. And then we can go and get the big tractor and we can hook the baler onto it. And we can bale the outside two rounds of the field. And then we can get the tractor over there going once more and get that one going with all of the raking. Very, very simple. Very easy process. At least it sounds like it on paper. Whether or not it's actually going to be that simple for us, I don't really know. So we will wait and see. I'm going to just bring this one back over here now and I'm going to fire it up. I'm going to manually do this bit because it's gone through and like done, it made this sort of funny dog leg bit. Uh, we do need to just kind of tidy this up so that the hired help can carry on and finish doing most of this. I think what we will do actually is if I manually chop out this little piece here, or at least do like a couple bits of it, it's going to really help it when it comes to just finishing off this piece. So bring you out like that, and then spin you round. Actually, I'm going to just lift that one up. Okay, I'm not going to lift that one up. Now I'm going to lift that one up. There we go, like that. And, you know, I was, I was just thinking that we would take out, like, the piece there. But if I do it in line with that long length over there, in theory, it should be able to cut all the way around that without any problems. So now let's lower you down again. I'm going to bring you over here like this. And basically, just chop it in like this. So I just got that little bit of a triangle right there that I can have to finish off. Just like that. Right, so I've got that bit. If I manually chop out this little triangle right here a second, then we've got everything done out on this side. And I think the combine will be able to cope with finishing off that bit by itself. I, I don't know. It might not. It may struggle. But I'm hoping that it can at least give it a really good go. So I will bring you in there like that. And then lift up. Back we go. And then we'll go up to the pointed end up there and take that bit. And hopefully that will be all we need to do out here and it will tidy it up. I suspect it's not going to tidy it up. Uh, my suspicion is that what's going to happen is that when it comes back round the field, it's going to struggle with this bit right here and it's going to just give up. It's going to stop. It's not going to like it at all. So if, if I go into there and let it get started on that bit, it'll sort of figure out what it's doing and where it's going. And then it's going to come in onto that bit. And yeah, my suspicion is that it's not going to quite be able to cope with it when it gets back round. But we'll deal with that in a minute. We don't need to deal with that right now. I'm going to move over to you next. I've done almost twice around the field now with this one. We've just got a bit over this side to do. And I'm actually going to try and get this so that we've got a straight line along the bottom edge of the field. If I can get this into a straight line along here then it's going to be a lot easier for us for doing the rest of the turning. So let's lower you down like that and bring you along. So, yeah, at, at the moment it's sort of, it's not particularly straight along here, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to just straighten up that bottom edge there. Now, I am what I'm going to end up having to do is I'm going to go into this line along here and I'm kind of hoping that I can keep it... Because I can see where the hired help was going for just further up the hill there a little bit. So I kind of need to use that as a, a measure. But I, I'm not sure that we're up quite high enough up the hill to be able to make this work well. I've got a feeling I'm a little bit too low down the hill. So I don't know... Once the baler has done its bit, I don't know that we're going to be able to get right the way across here. I'm just going to take that over there, like that. 
and do as much of this as I possibly can. And I'm going to bring you up like that, and then we'll do these short bits over here. Uh, just, well, it's actually going to be two short bits. So I'll do one here, and then I'll do the next short bit as well. And then we'll get the bailer going, tidy this up, and then we'll see. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I don't know whether this is going to be enough that I can just then set the... What I want to be able to do is just set the hired help going with that last little bit up there. And it will go all the way across the full length of the field. So long as I get this in the right place, it will be able to do that. But it's getting it in the right place. That's the tricky bit. So, so long as we can line it up right, we will be okay. So I'll bring you out like that. And I'm just going to bring you over here. And I'm going to stop you right there like that. Then we're going to go up here to this one. And I'm going to bring this tractor all the way down to the bottom. As soon as we've done the baling around the outside edge, we then need to go and get that one on there. That uh, hay turner back onto our little tractor and get that one going. I've got a bit of grass right there that we've missed, but I'm not going to cut that now because we've already been over this bit with the hay turner. So I don't want to kind of mess that up. We'll do something with that next time round, but we're not going to do it right now. Now, you, I need to fold you up to transport position. That would be better. And I will also do the same with the front mower. We'll get you in a transport position as well. Take up a little less space as we go whizzing along. And I'll bring them down here. I'll, I'll unhitch these next to the pressure washer over here. And as soon as I've done that, we can run over and get Lebela on. I'm going to put you down there like that. There. And then if I back up a little bit, bring you out like this. I'm going to have to get the front weight on for our baler. And then I'm going to back you in there like that. And I'm going to unhitch you here. Now, unfortunately, we can't lower the mower when it's in travel position without it unfolding first. You've got to do it like that. And I, I really, it really does bug me that we're forced to do that every time. Uh, the baler, uh, not the baler, the combine. I knew he was going to. I knew he was going to. I knew he was going to struggle with this a little bit. That's why we were getting that lag. You do just a little bit on, on the, like the, the dog legs. You, you always end up getting a little tiny bit of lag from... Uh, the, and we had another little bit over there as well. It's from... Yeah, uh, just just a little tiny bit from, uh, what do you call it, AI extension. You, it just when he's trying to do the little dog legs, he doesn't like that for some reason. I, I don't quite know why, but um, there we go. That's, that's just the way it is. And we'll lift that one up there. I'm going to run in a straight line over to this side. And I was thinking I'll just add in like another, take out another little tiny bit over here. I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm going to start it working up and down the field now. And I don't think I really need to worry about unloading it. Although I, I'm not sure that I'll get all of that into the tank. It might be an idea if we go and empty the combine out first. Now, unfortunately, our trailer is down over the other side. So it would be better if I was to bring that up like that. What we'll do, I'll shut the combine off. Probably be a good start. We'll bring this one over here and I'll tip it straight into the grill that's down this side get a ball up in my grill over this side bring you round bring you round a bit more a little tiny bit more and le pause okay we get that unloaded and then we might just get all of the rest of the crop that is left in the field stuffed inside this little grain tank that we've got here and then that's it for the combining We've got to start preparing for our next crop. Now, this time round, we don't need to worry about doing anything like ploughing and cultivating and stuff like that. We just need to get the crop in the ground. After we do maize, we do need to do ploughing. Um, that's the, just the way that the game is done. I know that in the US it's different. You don't actually need to plough the ground every time after maize. But typically, you would in a lot of Europe because right hang on a minute i want to go in here uh you do in a lot of europe because maize is harvested so late in the season and it generally starts to get wet so it makes such a mess of the fields that plowing is pretty much the best option um 
I've seen a lot of fields turned into an absolute quagmire and a, a, a horrible, horrible mess uh, because of trying to harvest the maize uh, right in uh, late autumn. And ploughing really is the only solution for the kind of mess that you're left with. Um, and that's not always the case. It doesn't always happen. But certainly in Europe, and the, the game is sort of a, a European-based game. Um, so it is more of a common activity as far as because I had a lot of comments saying why have you got a comp why have you got a um, plow after doing the the corn you would call it corn in the US um, why have you got a plow after doing the corn um, this this not sort of fair, this not standard practice you don't have to go and plow after doing the corn um, but here in the UK and large areas of Europe I'm not saying all of Europe but large parts of Europe yeah you you kind of do. I, it makes such a pig's ear of everything that ploughing is really your best option. That's, that's what you want to try and get done. Now, we're going to start off from this point, And ideally, I suppose, we should go down this hill. It would be better if we were going down this hill rather than up this hill. Because he does struggle quite a bit to get up this hill. So I am gonna, I'm going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to bout face. Now bring you back round over this way, and I am going to go down that hill. We've got to run out at the bottom, so if something does start to go wrong, we have got room to run the tractor out. Um, so we, we're not exactly going to be sliding. If you've got a situation on a steep hill where you don't have any, um, you don't have the ability to run it out at the bottom of the hill. Uh, I don't know. I like that's like a individual assessment i guess that there's no hard and i mean there is no hard and fast rule with anything when it comes to hills you take each hill as it comes and and you you don't if as soon as you start saying this rule must apply and this rule applies to all hills from this point on that's when things will go wrong um so no that the, there is no hard and fast rule you you've you got to kind of do whatever fits the situation best and sometimes it fits the situation best to go down the hill sometimes it fits the situation best to go up the hill and usually if at all possible you want to go down the hill but there are times when going down the hill is not very advisable especially if you've got like you, you want to try and go up the, the shallowest part of the hill if you can i right, find the shallowest part of the hill to be going up because then your wheels aren't going to be digging and spinning and tearing it all up and uh, you're not going to get stuck yeah coming down the hill you are going to slide but you can at least like control the slide you accelerate um and that causes your wheels to dig in and that and then you you decelerate and try not to use your brakes otherwise you just get to the bottom with the whoosh um but that's that's what you do with hills is, is you, you got to be careful but if you're coming down a hill and you got to stop halfway because there's a big drop off that's not so good. You, you don't really want that because it, there's no margin for error whatsoever. That there, you're probably better off going up the hill. But again, it's an individual assessment. It might not be that you're better off going up the hill. It might be, despite the fact that you, I meant to come back and get that little patch there, didn't I? And then I completely forgot about it. Um, it's it's definitely down to individual assessment. Like that, there is. Uh, I I'm going to say that there is no right and wrong way. Well, there, there is a right and a wrong way to do it. But you, there, there's no broad blanket. This is how you must do it when confronted with a hill. Because if you start trying to say this is how you must do it, you're going to apply that rule to a situation where you really, really shouldn't, and bad things are going to happen. Very, very bad things are going to happen. I mean, to be honest, if you like, say, for example, you're running down a steep hill towards the river over here. And it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper, and you're going down towards it. That's where you're... Like, that's, that's the sort of situation where you, you want to be seriously reconsidering. You want to be looking for any way to avoid working on a steep hill directly above a, a, a steep river like that. Double, you know, d double up your tyres so that you've got um, extra width, so you've got extra stability on your wheels, and go sideways across the hill. Certainly safer than going down the hill towards a steep drop-off. Because if something goes wrong, going down that hill towards a steep drop-off, what are you going to do to correct it? At the, you know, if, if you're lucky, you might be able to throw yourself out of the tractor cap before it goes over the cliff. But honestly... 
um, yeah, there's that's, that's kind of a bad choice. You know, you, do, do you stay with it and try and rescue it? When, when do you get to the point where you've got to throw yourself out of the tractor cab? And you just know that if you're working for someone else and you've thrown yourself out of the tractor cab and it's gone over the cliff, he's going to say, well, I could have done it better than that. And I could have done it so that I would have rescued the tractor you're fired. Uh, but then on the other hand, if you don't jump out of the tractor cab, you stay there too long trying to save said tractor, uh, you, you end up at the bottom of the river and possibly dead. And then he can fire you all he likes. It's not really going to change the fact that you're dead. And y you don't really want to be dead. That's, 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 not a really, um, that's, that's not a really good situation to be in. It's, it's usually best to try to avoid that particular state. Um, if, if, if possible. I'm, I'm not saying that you have to if you don't want to. Well, it's, it, it's a good idea. Um, I'm saying that you should seriously consider avoiding it. Because, let's be honest... There's a lot of things that you can do when you're not. There's a lot of things that life has to offer when you're not actually dead. And, um, yeah, going down the hill towards that steep drop-off is... The, it's got the potential for ruining your day. It really does. Um, now, I'm going to... Let's, let's move on to something a little less morbid, shall we? <laughs> it's probably not the most friendly and delightful chat to be having. On Tuesday, well, it's, it's, it's actually for you it's a Thursday, isn't it? Um, and it's a Thursday, I was going to say a Tuesday morning, but for you it's a Thursday afternoon. So we're on um, a, a whole different timeline here. And I'm going to whiz round this way. Our combine is on 55%. And he's got a little bit still to go. I reckon he probably wouldn't have gotten all of it in if we hadn't emptied out to start with. But I do think he will get all of it out now. Uh, that, what did I say? We're going to do corn in that field next. And then that should be, is that going to be enough corn to keep the pigs going? I mean, we've got some corn here. I can't remember how much we did end up with. We've got, if we take a look in here, at the moment we've got 70,000 litres of corn. 70,000 isn't too shabby. Oh, we, we could do a lot worse than 70,000 litres of corn. We are going to want... I think how much we're going to want all together. I I don't know. I'm I'm just like trying to go. But my only other experience with pigs recently, in in recent memory, is with the seasons, and that's altogether different. You end up like six thousand liters for a, a day's worth. Um, but I don't think we can go and we can't really do anything off of um seasons to like judge it. So I'm not sure how much feed we're going to need. For a full pen of pigs. Now remember, we do actually have to fill the pen all the way up. Um, it's not just a question of giving them a bit of feed. It, the pen has got to be filled up. Now once it's been filled up once, it's easy to maintain it. Because you get six days worth of food into the pen. And technically we can grow a crop every three days. So we are looking at technically... A whole year's, well actually two years worth of food going into the pig pen all in one go. So there, there is a lot of food going in there. It, technically, there, there, there is an awful lot. And we're doing the same with the cattle anyway. And we are filling those up at a reasonable rate. So I'm confident that that can keep going. And I'm confident that we're going to be able to get everything that we need in there. But I don't know if it's going to be with two crops. If it's not two, I reckon that the other crops we've got are enough. We've got a load of wheat. We've got a load of um, protein crops now with the soybeans and with the canola. Um, so next crop will be corn. The one after that, I'll probably do more wheat or barley. Do one of them. Then we've got a bit more straw coming in because we are running a little bit low on straw. And then... And it'll be another one of corn if we still need it. But that's that's the point. I, I don't actually know if we're going to need it or not. This bit right here, see. This isn't so bad right here. Coming down here. But if I was to go out beyond those trees, that starts to get a little bit too steep. I wouldn't really want to play around with that. I wouldn't want to play around with that very much at all. I'd, I'd start to get rather nervous over that bit. But here, I mean, that's that's pretty steep right there. And then as you go further back down here, this this is getting to the point where it's bordering on dangerous, right? That that the steep uh, the, the steepness of that hill right there, especially directly above the canyon, 
this is where it's starting to border on dangerous, especially as I don't have the wheel weights on the rear wheels, which mean that um, we're not able to dig in quite as much as I'd like. And that's definitely going to put us at a slight disadvantage trying to haul this big-ass baler up the hill. And it does. It, it, it's got a wide load on it. If, if you look at it here, it's, 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 it, it has got quite a big backside on it, this, this baler right here. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking that maybe we need to put some wheel weights on it because that's, that's a heavy old baler. If we would have some wheel weights on the tractor, that might help us a bit. Now, coming down the hill... It's never a good idea to press the brakes. Steep hill, like brakes like that, it can end up just causing you to slide. It does depend what's under your feet, what's under your wheels. Uh, but, yeah, you, you can still slide and get, you know, there's a, there's a lot of damage that can be done there if, if you slide too far and too fast. Um, I'm going to take these two out of the way. And then I want to get a trailer on. And I want to get the last of the... Uh, well, not the last of... I want to... Get, get a trailer on and get all of these bales out of the way. So I need to just spin you around a little bit like that. There, and then back up. We'll just clear this bit out of the way completely. Uh, there's going to be another full bale done as well. And then I can... I'll get the bales done. As soon as the bales are done, we will then go up and we'll put the hay turner going. And then I will put the rake going down here. And then finally, we will put the, the other bit going. So I'm just going to put you here somewhere. I'll, I'm going to unhitch the baler in the field. Put you down there like that. Stop you. Unhitch that baler in the field like that. And we will go and get the trailer with this tractor. As soon as we've done that... How are you doing over there, Combine? Combine's doing fine. Uh, as soon as we've got this bit, then we can get back going with all of the rest of those machines over that side. There's my trailer. Looking good. Cows are looking pretty good as well. They've got loads of food. They've got plenty of water. We've got, hopefully, enough cows by the morning that we're going to be everyday, produ uh, everyday production. Everyday collection from sort of this point on. We did have to leave it today. Quite have enough in there to warrant picking it up today. So we're, we're on, at the moment, every other day. But I'm, I'm hoping that starting tomorrow, we will be everyday collection. So first thing in the morning, every single day, we're getting more money from milk from the cows. And that's going to translate into more money for more cows and also more pigs. So let's bring you to that point right there. And I will start loading. That baler is... Oh, wait a minute. We're stop loading and go to actual large square bales right there that would be good and let's take you right i'm gonna go straight up this hill for all that that i was talking about going down the hill this trailer right here is not one that i would want to drive down a hill with i would rather go slow and go up the hill than go i mean if he's got the trailer brakes on then yes i would be more inclined to go um down the hill with it so long as i knew those trailer brakes were good but if the trailer brakes failed and you got a rigid body trailer without a turntable on it you at least have some confidence in the fact that um your tractor has got a your tractor has got a working chance of being able to survive and you know, get you to the bottom of the hill reasonably safely. With this trailer right here, if the trailer brakes failed and you were purely on the tractor going down a hill, it would almost certainly, like if it's a steep hill, it would almost certainly jackknife and you would come to grief. The, I, like, you might, you might be really lucky. You might be able to hold it back. But if this trailer is loaded up with any kind of weight on it and those trailer brakes fail... You are, yeah, you, you, you're living on a prayer, quite frankly. You, you haven't got much hope. I forgot to go and bail up the bit around the rock in the middle. I forgot to go and get those. Uh, I ought to do that, really. I tell you what, we'll get the baler on in a minute, and I'll dump the two bales that's in it, and then I'll go over there into the middle, and that shouldn't be more than two bales. And that way I don't have to worry about it excessively. I can just kind of leave it going. But yeah, it, it, one of these going down a hill, that's, that's not a situation that I would want to be in when the trailer brakes fail. Which is, again, for steep ground, 
I wouldn't want to be using a trailer with a turntable like this on steep ground at all. I absolutely, I would much rather have a rigid body trailer, um, like just with with one hitch on it. I don't know if we got any in here. We must have this. We must have some somewhere. Uh, trailers in here. No, it's going to be under bale equipment, isn't it? So we want to have a look under baling, loading baling technology in here. See, it's, it's all turntable trailers. See, they're, they're all turntable trailers. It's because that's the only mods I've got at the moment. Um, yeah, well, you, you, there, there we go. Right, there, bale trailer, a proper bale trailer like that. One of those. If your trailer brakes fail with a trailer like that, you've actually got a chance of living, right? You, you do actually have a chance of getting to the bottom of the hill and without it all tipping over. I mean, yes, you suddenly got that great big weight behind the tractor and there's nothing holding it back besides the tractor. So it is going to be uh, potentially quite a struggle coming down the hill. But you've got a much better chance of making it out alive than you do with a trailer like this if the brakes should fail. At least that is my interpretation of events. I don't know. I mean, maybe some of you think that you, you're better off having one of these. Um... To be honest, I think that if you can avoid driving on a hill in the first place that with a, a loaded trailer, that's, that's probably the best option. If, if, if possible, don't drive up and down a steep hill with a loaded trailer. If you don't have any choice, then yeah, you know, you, 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 you're, you're, in a bit, you're a bit more limited, aren't you? If you haven't got any choice and that's just what's got to happen, then you are a bit more limited and there are certain things that you may have to do that you don't necessarily want to do. I'm going to stop that one there, and I'm going to unload those bales onto the trailer. I'm going to strap them down, and then I'm going to unhitch that trailer and leave it right there. Then we're going to go and get this baler on, and we're going to run up around that big stone up the top, and we're going to bale up there, because I went and forgot all of that bit. Uh, so if I back up this way, there we go, and I'm going to unload those two bales that we've got in here like that there then i'm gonna go this way you are finished so we want to just end that one and i'm gonna stop you there for a second actually you know what i will send this one off i'll send it over to the just the grain bin over here and we'll start unloading that it's a we were pretty close 96 percent 6136 liters in this combine right here so it's a good job we did empty out well, there's no way we would have fit in all the rest of that crop so i'm just gonna bring you over there like that and i'm gonna stop you there so that you can tip that lot out i'm gonna shut the engine off and just leave that running and then i'm going to go over this way and i'm gonna get to you i'm gonna start you running because what I'd like to do is I'd like to put this one going with the hired help up and down across the field. I'm hoping that if I bring it down to here, he will be able to go across. Why are you using AI extension? You shouldn't be. I'm going to go here and just go with normal like that. Right. I think it used AI extension for doing raking. I thought that was like a, a no-go for it. Now, are you going to be in the right place to do it? I don't think it is. Time it gets all the way to the other end of the field. It's still going to have left a little tiny bit. We'll deal with that later. You carry on there. And you over this side. We're going to run you back up this hill. And we're going to go and get the bit around the stones. I should have enough room in the bell chamber here. To get the last of that hay in there. So, the canola is finished. Next task in that field is actually going to be to spread some fertilizer on it, for which I'm going to need that tractor in front of us. So I'm going to leave that tractor going. I'm not going to interrupt that one until he's finished doing all the raking that I want it to do. As soon as he has done said raking, then we can interrupt him and he can go on and do a few other bits and pieces, such as spreading fertilizer and getting started on doing the... Um, the, the, the what do you call in that field as well? The... Um, you know, you know, you know what I mean by the waddy call. Let's start you up. Uh, the planting. We, we get the planter onto that one, and we can start planting the next crop. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If we're planting corn in there, if we're planting corn in that in that field down there. We're going to have to cultivate it. We can't just go. We can't just go and put a planter going. I got to cultivate the field first. Right. I'm going to jump off of you. 
jump up onto this side and start that baler up. Let that one keep going over there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get the cultivator out and put that one onto the doits. Run the cultivator up and down the field so that it can get that going. And then we will need to put the planter going after that. The planter is one that's got to run on this tractor. Or we've got to change the... and get a front links back. We've got to take the loader console off of the doits and put the um, front loader... Take the whole front loader. Put it, put the yeah put put the front links back onto the doys. Take the loader console off. Put the front links onto it so that it can do it can then carry the front part of the seed drill for planting the corn. Don't know how well that's going to work out for it. Right, there's the rest of our bale in here, and I want to go up here. So what's that tractor going to do? Now last time when we ha well when the mower was doing something, it came past the stone absolutely fine but then for some weird reason it kind of stopped down the other end it reversed all the way up to the stone then turned round and did the short bit instead of doing the long bit which i was a little confused about i will be honest that did throw me a bit i didn't really expect it to go and do that but well if that's what it needed to do in order to sort of venture out and um show its individuality i suppose that's fine we, we can we can get on board with that I'm going to go straight into baling now. I'm just going to carry right on with the baling. We've got the raking being done. We've got the hay turning being done. So all I need to do is... Yeah, I've picked up the, the bales are down there. The combining is done. We've got the other two tractors working in the field. So I can keep going with this one now and try and get as much of the baling done as possible. Uh, the only thing that I want to do... I've got a couple things actually. Because it's so steep, I don't really want to be leaving these bales here. But I do want to go to you. And I want to make sure that you turn around properly. Because if you do anything stupid, like driving all the way back to the other end of the field, I'm going to be disappointed. I'll be bitterly disappointed. Doesn't look like it's going to, actually. It looks like that she's just going to turn around, drop it down, and go. Go on. Now drop it down. Put it down. Down on the ground. There you go. Right, excellent. Okay, that one's going to carry on. That means I can carry on over here. I'm going to do this, I think, row by row and work my way up the hill in order to make sure that it does actually bail up properly. Probably should be using the dual wheels on this as well, considering how steep it gets over on this side. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but this is pretty steep. I, I wouldn't necessarily be entirely comfortable going sideways longer but I've never really been com I know some farmers who like they're quite happy to go sideways on the hill um rather than going up and down the hill I've, I've always been one that prefers I, I just feel safer going up and down the hill rather than going sideways across it especially when you get steep like that bit up there that is pretty steep up there and I'm I I'm a little bit uncomfortable about driving across the side of that I've, not, that, I've, I've always sort of been a bit like that. I'd, I, I'd much prefer, like, straight down. Straight down the hill it make, always makes me feel a lot safer. But then I, I do wonder if that's partly... Um, I, I have slid sideways a couple times in a tractor before now. Driving it and, you know, try, trying to do whatever job it is that I'm doing. And then the tractor is like, slid sideways as you've been working along... Going along the side of the hill and... It's a very disconcerting feeling. Uh, if you're going forwards or backwards and the tractor is sliding, you've got some control over it. In that situation, you do have control over your vehicle. You are able to correct a forward or back slip. Right? It might not be a, a wonderful thing. It might not be an easy thing to know. It, it, it might be almost certain problems. But you are still able to correct it. You've got a chance. If your tractor, if you're driving sideways across a hill and your tractor starts to slip sideways, there is very little you can do to actually prevent it from continuing to slip sideways. Uh, there is a bit you can do. You do have some options open to you, but not as many as you do if you're driving forwards down the hill. That's why it's safer to drive down the hill. But again, um, I, I know plenty of people who drive combines that will like that will always say that it's safer to go across the, the hill than it is to go up and down the hill with a comp like with a combine um and so i it, it it's partly i think situational as well but anyway 
I've been rabbiting on about this for ages and we've run out of time. Now I'm turning way too sharp there. I shouldn't be turning that sharp, but we're working on a steep hill, so I make exceptions. Um, I've run out of time. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.